Welcome to the DLC Abyssal Terrors for Potato, which has got some new jamming tunes along with a whole heck load of new content for a game that's already pretty beloved by yours truly. For the launch of the DLC, I figured let's start a new save file in Potato. There's now a ludicrous quantity of characters to play thanks to patch updates and of course the DLC itself. Plus there are two zones to play in, Crash Zone and Abyss, which each have separate victory tracking and separate, uh, and I think we're just gonna do random random runs. Uh, the idea is that I think I'm gonna alternate Crash Zone Abyss each run. We'll do random random and repeat this process until we have completed every character on Danger 5, which we'll have to unlock by doing some low run difficulty waves first. Well, that won't take too long. Let's start by showing off the abyss here. Rip and tear until it is done. More experience for every three weapon slot. More stats from level ups. More XP required to level up. And scaling enemy health and damage. An interesting character. Apparently going to be starting with Shredder here. On Danger Zero. Like the hat. Mr. Capiton. So the Abyss is more like ocean theme. We'll see a lot of sea themed enemies. Shrimps and walruses. And harvesting, huh? So we get less level ups, but more stats from each. I think 10 harvesting is pretty awesome. And I guess we're going to be a captain with guns. Works for me. We get more experience for having fewer weapons equipped. I wonder if that's just for an early game boost or if there's maybe some meta to deliberately keeping as few weapons as possible. Is the Abyss map harder? That's unclear to me. I played a little bit of the Abyss uh, during the test period um, offline. I find the Abyss harder, but that might just be a general lack of experience with it, right? Like, if you have two things that are exactly equal in difficulty and you're familiar with one of them, you're not familiar with the other one, the other one's going to be way harder, right? Just because you don't have any experience in it yet. So, actually, unclear to me. But I think in general, probably a little bit harder, at least. Get some damage. Get some cheaper items. I like it. The sickle's a new weapon here. A support class weapon scales with harvesting. Note that 10% of harvesting added to the damage. Also does more damage to targets on low health. Interesting little weapon. Explosion damage will affect these shredders. So let's buy the dynamite here. I think I'll lock a Corrupted Shard. New to the DLC is the Curse stat. Curse stat says, enemies have a 0% chance of being cursed. Enemies become stronger and drop more materials when cursed. Items and weapons you find have been more a chance to be cursed, making them more powerful. So skill, the enemies are stronger and drop more materials. Which makes sense. I would, I would broadly call these the same genre, so... Makes sense to me. Sounds at first glance to me like Curse is primarily going to scale the number of things on screen by making our run more flanderized. Whatever it is, it'll be more so with Curse. Mixed feelings about that kind of concept, but let's see how that plays out. I'm, I'm sure Curse runs will be absurd. I got a blue stat up. How about a purple range upgrade that gives 90 range? Okay. Ned Flanderized? Yes, that's where the term comes from, is Ned Flanders. To be Flanderized is to have all of your properties exaggerated increasingly with time, becoming a caric caricature of oneself. I'll take the bait. I'm wondering if I should add Shotgun to the mix here. Right now I'm liking our lower numbers. Yes, actually, yes. It, it's a it's a TV trope term to, to be flanderized. 
that's named after Ned Flanders of Simpsons, who, over the seasons of The Simpsons, became written in a way that uh, exaggerated his more ridiculous properties and made him behave much differently than he had in previous seasons. Next, you're going to tell me that you didn't know Jumping the Shark was about a literal scene from Baywatch. Four range damage or 20 attack speed. I definitely, with guns, want to go more damage. Don't want a pistol. Might want a lemonade, but I'm just going to reroll here. Give me another super shredder. And roll again. Give me another shredder. And roll again. Give me more harvesting. Yes. And let's combine some shredders here. Go away five. What makes Potato different to other games of the same type? I would say that Potato most successfully implements roguelite style choices where you're given a random selection of things in a way that creates interesting choices for the player. So compared to Vampire Survivors, for example, when you level up in Vampire Survivors, you can choose a random item or weapon um, to acquire or upgrade. But then once you've maxed out your slots, you're typically just choosing which of the things you already have to upgrade further. And it really doesn't matter that much usually because you're eventually just gonna max out all of the tiers. So being offered four random choices isn't really used meaningfully in Vampire Survivors, or three choices, whatever it is, I don't remember. But in Potato, it's actually rather hard to figure out what stat you want a lot of the time. And there's a lot of different roads to success. So Potato achieves actually presenting the player with choices that you have to think about versus other Survivor likes. I want 10 crit chance. I think I want to reroll here. Oh, Max out. We should grab that. Red. Two purple shredders here. Get some more damage. I think another gun would be a good idea. This is a little revolver, I guess. We just skip an early bag. Minus one speed is worse than it might seem. Um, and the reason is that you could buy other stuff with that money. Like sure bag will eventually pay for itself, but a fertilizer would be better, for example. So I'd rather reroll and look for a fertilizer. Also, if I'm not playing a character who expects to have good luck or good tree generation, then I just don't expect to find that many crates. Oh, there's one. <laughs> a free turret, sure. A little bit of passive damage. Let's get four range damage. And another 12 speed. The double level up stats is kind of nuts on this character. Oh. Redder 4. Is the Elite better than a normal character, a normal controller for Potato? I'm pretty sure you can play Potato just fine with a $10 AliExpress controller. Or whatever cheap Logitech controller you can find. If it's good enough for the Ocean Gate Submersible, it's good enough for Potato. It's not the controller holding you back. No, I don't think so. No, as long as you, as long as your controller has a working joystick, you can play Potato just fine. There's not a whole lot of buttons being pressed here, and there's only there's only four inputs in Potato: uh, up, down, left, and right. Everything else that happens during the wave is being occurring automatically. 
Let's go fast. Let's get more XP gain. Buy these. Be nice to have some healing. Maybe we should take um, some of these butterflies are being offered. Think about getting some luck. Take another range damage. All right, we got an achievement that'll unlock a new character. We're gonna get a lot of character unlocks on this first run, I have to imagine. Is this playable with keyboard mouse? Yes. You can use WASD, or I'm pretty sure you can rebind the controls to any four keys you want to move around. Um, you can use mouse for manual aiming if you want. There's a manual aim mode. You can even have it be click to engage manual aim. If you want to really precisely choose your shots. a way in game to display my uh, my current character. I've seen some of the other Rotato streamers re revert to some extreme OBS shenanigans to <laughs> answer the perpetual question of what potato but what potato are we playing? But this one is Captain. We get um, more stats from level ups, which is strong. Another turret. I don't think I want a cog, though. Maybe a biased cog. I don't know what that was, but I've murdered it. Hey there, Wave HD. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Brotato Town. Having, so cursed enemies, by the way, have a purple outline to them. Makes them pretty... Yeah, those ones. Pretty easy to identify which ones are cursed. Think they're faster. They definitely do more damage and have more health. I think we're talking like double damage, too. It's a lot more damage. Would love one more range damage, sure. How about six more range damage? How about six more armor? I think six armor, actually. That sounds nice. And another four armor. Now I have 12 armor. Widened. Naval weapon. I believe all the naval weapons scale with your curse stat. Trident does more damage to targets at high health. I have one of each color of Shredder. This is weird. Oh, here we go. Fix that problem right away. Perfect. I can pull a new support weapon. Scales with your range. It says plus one range for every 60 steps you take during a wave. Fascinating. more experience. Mediocre, though. Early metal detector is not bad, either. It's gonna roll. Hey, that's pretty good. Yoink. All right, do I buy the white shredder? I don't think I do at the moment. Great question, Shmemorin. Is the number of steps dependent on your speed? I don't know. I'm going to say yes, it is, based on how quickly my Brotato is stepping around at 30% move speed right now. Let's see his little feet going. Oh, 
that would mean the hiking pull also kind of scales with speed, sort of, kind of. Will I stream any Hades 2? I am waiting for 1.0. We checked out the very initial early access release. I got a, a kill on Kronos with most of the weapons, and then I decided to put it down until the full release. I want to I wanna let it cook. And that was the approach I did for Hades 1 as well. Okay, I'll take a free gambling token. I got lots of armor. Let's grab some dodge, balance that out. Um, let's actually take four lifesteal. I was thinking we could use a bit more healing here. Not that durable currently. Fish hook. Locked items and weapons have a chance to become cursed when leaving the shop. Interesting. So it only applies to things you lock. Seems mediocre. It might be Andrew, thanks for 100 bits. Have I tried the Silent Hill 2 remake? I've not played any of the Silent Hill games. Definitely not my uh, genre. Beloved classics, though, I hear. Oh, we got a cursed weapon, Cursed Revolver. So let's compare these directly. Cursed Revolver has higher base damage Higher damage scaling with our range stat. Higher critical hit multiplier. Same cooldown, same knockback, same range. Okay, so more damage, more damage scaling, and more crit multipliers. Kind of cool. My understanding is that if we combine a blue cursed revolver and a blue uncursed revolver, we're going to get a purple cursed revolver. Yes. Seems badass. Different weapons get different stats from Curse. That makes sense. Feather's an interesting one. Plus one range damage, plus three dodge, minus three experience gain. How curious. We had screen shake on. Uh, resetting my save file also reset all my game options, so I had to reconstruct those, and I missed a couple things. Curse good in this game? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to evaluate its goodness. It, it definitely is a stat that can kill you by making the enemies stronger. You have to be able to outscale the additional scaling the enemies get, and that's really dependent. Taking this though. All right, now we're cooking. range damage, three engineering. First energy bracelet gives seven crit chance, four elemental damage, and four curse. Weapons can no longer be upgraded or recycled. Interesting. So not means you're kind of locked into your current weapons. We could definitely do that with this weapon array, but I don't want to. Four range. What is our range stat? Only 159. We can do way better than that.
This is Danger 5? No, we started a fresh save. This is our first run on the, on the new save. So this is Danger 0. We'll have to unlock Danger 5 again. Ripti's interesting. More health from consumables, but they heal us slowly. Are there bosses in this game? Yes. Is there an in-game way to reset your progress? Um, you have to do it... No, uh, you have to do it through Steam. Under the betas tab, you have to opt into the reset beta, and that will reset your save file. How's it going, Jane Koviak? But we'll be on Danger 5 pretty soon. I imagine we do, you know, four runs and then we're there. It's five, zero, one, two, three, four. Cycle that. Ooh, I like the new version of Acid. 8 max health, minus 2 dodge, minus 2 knockback. Not too bad. Crystal. 5% attack speed, 1% attack speed every second until the end of the wave. Bonus is lost when taking damage. This is not unique. You can have more than one of these. That seems really good. I guess that makes our turrets really bad, too. So... Forget buying another turret. Give me more enemies, how about? That sounds great. And I'm not going to buy the Clockwork Wasp. First Dangerous Bunny. Two free rerolls in the shop. Sure. Why not? Festo MD, thanks for 20 months, two metric years. So I'll go over one more time. What is Curse? Curse makes the enemies have a purple border around them sometimes. Cursed enemies are much tougher and much deadlier, but also drop more money. Cursed items also come with higher stats to compensate for the added curse. So the curse stat makes the game wackier is how I would summarize it. The more curse we have, the more stuff will be happening on screen at any given moment. But why are the walruses so cute? You almost feel kind of bad for shooting them with, with your SMG, right? A little bit. 18 dodge? You know what? That sounds grand. What if I were to lose that dodge immediately? And play through. More chance for loot aliens to appear, but more movement speed for loot aliens. I like that. They're not going to be able to escape me, though. No way, no how. Blippity blappity.
Bone Dice. 50% chance to gain plus 1% damage when rerolling in the shop. 10% chance to get minus one max health when rerolling in the shop. That's cute. We got lots of free rerolls, so sure. Baited. I've been baited. Oh, I got both on that one. That it shows an icon for whether it works or not. And again, both. <laughs> Cute. There you go. Just plus one damage that time. You love to see it. Level 15. Actually, pretty good for Captain. type enemies that are appearing. I feel like we got too much damage on this run. I don't really get to learn what the enemies on uh, the Abyss do. Oh well. Oh well. Oh. Enemies not dying instantly. What is this? Scam. Minus reroll price. Wait. Still no baked potato in this game. You know, that does seem like an oversight. And you have minus 100% reroll price. That's what I was wondering. With bone dice, that seems, um, breakable, <laughs> right? It seems rather breakable. First medical gun heals the person you shoot with it. a bit. Items will be one tier higher after the next reroll. Let's see what that generates here. Ghost Flint 4. That's cute. Tardigrade is great because then we don't lose the stacking attack speed buff from the crystal. This is also great. Huge fishhook fan? I don't understand the appeal, personally.
Too late. Or dodge. Oh, it's only minus 37% reroll price, but we can still get very cheap rerolls. Not sure why the second one wasn't also minus 50. Wait, because it has more range? Are cursed items not always the same? Okay, yeah, curse has a range of values it can be. Okay, that that immediately makes me understand the fish hook more, actually. That makes sense. Relatively challenging way with all these cursed enemies appearing. See, we're at 100% damage, 68 attack speed. Give me the 20 attack speed then. Max L. Let's take a uh, schmoop then. Get a bit more max L here. Ashes. 20 damage, 20 attack speed, 100 range, but minus one armor at the end of a wave. Sounds perfect. Speaking of perfect, we get perfect vision for getting to 300 range stats. Giving us one of the harder to get character unlocks, actually. Cool. Here on wave 20, we have a boss to fight. Kill the boss or survive for 90 seconds. Don't actually have to win here. We win the wave. I like your snail pattern. Kind of cool. Gene. 